Doctors Bill and Veronica Winston are dedicated to seeing lives changed through the power of prayer. Our loving and highly trained prayer ministers are ready to pray and agree with you. We know that prayer can turn around any situation in your life. Contact us by phone at 1-877-543-9443 or submit your prayer request online at billwinston.org forward slash prayer. Follow us on Periscope and Facebook to join us for our regular live prayer sessions. We want to thank our partners who have made this prayer call center possible. Together, we are transforming lives throughout the world. If you are not a partner, we encourage you to pray about joining us in partnership and be a part of the wonderful work that God is doing through this ministry. We love you and look forward to praying and partnering with you. The Believer's Walk of Faith is paid for by Bill Winston Ministries partners and viewers. Up next on The Believer's Walk of Faith. People do all kinds of stuff, weird stuff, man. Trying to look a certain way because of their selfie. So God, the first thing he did before he gave you power, gave you authority, gave you an assignment, gave you provision, and gave you fellowship, is he gave you an image. Hello, I'm Bill Winston, and welcome to the Believer's Walk of Faith, where we walk by faith and not by sight. Well, today's teaching is on spiritual warfare, volume three, powerful teaching. Now, one important aspect of spiritual warfare is that your image has a lot to do with the amount of God's power that can flow through you. See, God made you his righteousness. He gave you his righteousness. And this righteousness, consciousness, is something that we need for that spiritual battle, for that power to flow through us and do what God plans to do. Now, this is so much a topic today because we're enduring spiritual warfare today like perhaps never before on the face of this earth. So this teaching is key. Now, get your Bibles and pencils and papers ready. Let's go into it. It's called Spiritual Warfare, Volume 3. Prayer is one of the main ways that we get things done in the earth because everything you see has a spiritual root tied to it. And your job and mine is to cut that root. In other words, if it doesn't belong in heaven, it doesn't belong in earth. And so wherever God sends us, he wants to us to establish to us, he wants us to establish heaven on earth. Now, about your image and walking in dominion, let's go back to Genesis chapter 1. And in Genesis chapter 1, this is God creating the heavens and the earth. Now he's creating man, mankind. And he said in verse 26, And God said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, over the cattle, and over all the earth, and every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image, in the image of God created he him, male and female created he them. And God blessed them and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fishes, sea, over the fowl of the air and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. This, what he gave mankind, and let me get my notes here because it's all on one page. That, that's a miracle right there within itself. Now, what God gave man. Now, before God gave man power, before he gave him authority, before he gave him dominion, first, he gave him an image. Now, that is worth thinking about. He gave him his own image. He took a selfie. Are y'all are y'all with me? It was a self 
picture that he gave them. And when Adam sinned, I think that was the most valuable thing he lost. He lost his fellowship. He lost his provision. He lost his assignment in the garden. But I think the most valuable thing that he lost was his self-image, the image of God. And I think it is so valuable until the devil does maintenance on your image almost 24 hours a day. Because he knows your correct image is the key to everything else working like it's supposed to. Are y'all with me on this? Now, like I said, I'm not going to talk long on this because I want to just give you something to think about. I think sometimes I cover a whole lot of things and, and people miss maybe the essential things that you'd be thinking about. But when Adam fell, he no longer saw himself as God saw him. In fact, he... He ran from God and hid himself, he and Eve. And when God asked him what happened, he started pointing the finger at Eve, the woman you gave me. Well, let's come over to Numbers, Numbers chapter 13. And over in Numbers chapter 13, it says, when they came back from spying out the land of Canaan, they began to talk about the giants and how big the giants were. We're talking about facing the giants now. And then Caleb and, Moses and, and, and um, Joshua had a different report. They said, hey, verse 30, Caleb still the people before Moses and said, let us go up at once, possess it, for we are well able to overcome it. But the men that went up with him said, we'd be not able to go up against these people, for they are stronger than we. And they brought up what kind of report? An evil report. Evil report in the land which, in which they had searched unto the children of Israel, saying the land through which we have gone to search it is a land that eateth up its inhabitants thereof. And all the people that we saw in it are men of great stature. And there we saw the giants, the sons of Anak, which come of the giants. And we were in our own sight as grasshoppers, and so were we in their sight. Now, what are we trying to bring out? That how you see yourself is how others will see you. It's very interesting. I, I, I used to know this guy. We were in high school. And I could honestly say, now I'm not reflecting negatively on anybody. Say amen, somebody. Amen. But this guy was not the most handsome guy you could see, you could find. Okay? I'm going to just leave it like that. But he had the prettiest girls. I say, how is Willie getting these women? But you know what? Willie thought he was the prettiest thing. Really? Pretty Willie is what they call him. <laughs> no, no, are you following what I'm saying? I said, something happens to people when they devalue themselves. It's like the, the environment begins to devalue them. That is one of the biggest things I think right now people are fighting today is how properly to, to see themselves properly as God sees them. Let's just do a little more work with that. You will see all men through your own self-picture. See them all. Do your own self picture. How you see them? Now I told you I, I was I was I was I was in the military and I went in there and I said, Hank, I, I don't believe nobody can beat me flying. But I think I think I'll get top gun. 
Then I came in, in, in computers. I don't think anybody can beat me selling these computers. I think I'll get top salesman. I don't care what color you are. It doesn't make any difference. See, it's a selfie. How do you see yourself? You, you will treat others as you see yourself. If you don't like yourself, you're going to hurt somebody. You're going to abuse, you're going to be talking about them, you're going to so forth. It's only a reflection of how you see yourself. We were in our own sight as what? Yes. And so were we in this. You'd be surprised what people do to themselves because of a poor selfie. Sometimes I see them and I just shake my head. Lord have mercy. Talking about abusing themselves. Trying to look good enough for somebody else. When they don't know it, that it's in their image. Cause Willie didn't look good. He <laughs> didn't, man. I said, where Willie getting all these fine women, man? Some, something's up here. <laughs> I'm not, do you understand I'm not talking down about anybody? It's not that. Image is more than physical. So people do all kinds of stuff, weird stuff, man. Trying to look a certain way because of their selfie. And so God, the first thing he did before he gave you power, gave you authority, gave you an assignment, gave you provision, and gave you fellowship is he gave you an image because God has a problem fellowshipping with a person who sees themselves low and un, uh, low and, and, uh, and without real uh, esteem. Yeah, and, and, and you will too. Your son or your daughter, you don't want them to come to you uh, crying, please, you know, like, a, like, like somebody who you don't know. The Bible says, come boldly to the throne of grace. Praise God. That's daddy. Folks, people take it to the grave, trying to be something for somebody else. And let me tell you, you'll never be good enough. Just so forget it. You may as well go ahead and be you. How you see yourself is directly related to how God can pass his power through you. directly related. Righteousness. First thing about righteousness is righteousness is I'm right with God. You got two sons. One of them said, Dad, give me the money, I'm out of here. Give me my inheritance. So he gave it to him. This is over in Luke chapter 15. So he went out. But he spent all he had. Ran out of money. People gave him a job feeding hogs or whatever have you, and meaning that, you know, people feed poultry all the time. But my point to you is he was living much below his privileges. But then the Bible says he came to himself. He said, you know, I'm going home because the servants in daddy's house are doing better than this. I'll just be a servant. So he went home, dad saw him coming a long ways off, ran to him, hugged and kissed him, brought him on in. And he said, dad, you don't know what I've done. I've sinned against heaven before you. I'm not worthy to be called your son. Make me as one of the servants. Daddy said, uh-uh, I'm not going to even answer that. Bring the best robe and put it on him. Now you see what the son was trying to do. He was trying to peddle 
a Babylonian system into daddy's house. See? He was trying to get dad to look at him the way the world does. Dad said, no way. You're not a servant. You're a son. You're not a slave. You're my offspring. So I don't care who and how you were born. I don't care what the DNA was that was passed down from your parents. I don't care what so forth and so on. Now you need to say, wait a minute, I'm born again. I need to take new ownership of who I really am and go go back to my real roots, which are in Jesus Christ. Say amen to that. I mean, it's all right, all right to take your own family tree and family roots and so forth, but let the biggest thing that's in your mind be the fact that you are a child of God. Folks, I really believe that this image has a lot to do with dominion. It has a lot to do with what Satan can put on you. A lot to do with it. Because he comes to what? Steal, come on, kill, destroy. Let's look at one. Let's go to Job, Job chapter one. How we doing, doing okay? Let's start at verse uh, five. And it was so, when the days of their feasting were gone about, that Job sent and sanctified them and rose up early in the morning and offered burnt offerings according to the number of them all. For Job said, it may be that my sons have sinned and cursed God in their hearts. Watch this. This did Job do what? Continually. See? See, a lot of things start coming in. Shame of how his kids were acting. Why? Because it just said that Job was an upright man. See, he, 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 he went to a holiness church. Yeah, 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 see. And to have his kids drinking and, and smoking and so forth, so on, like, he, it, 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 I'm sure it started working on him. So he started sacrificing every day. Now he's drifting into guilt, shame, unbelief, and so forth. Now the image is leaving. Now I want you to see this. Verse six, now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord and Satan also among them. And the Lord said to Satan, whence cometh thou? And Satan answered the Lord and said, from going to and fro in, in the earth and from walking up and down in it. And the Lord said to Satan, hast thou considered my servant Job that there is none like him in the earth? A perfect an upright man one that feareth God and acheweth evil. And Satan answered the Lord and said, does Job fear God for naught? Has not thou made a hedge about him and about his house and about all that he had on every side? And thou hast blessed, on the line blessed, the work of his hands, that's a barakah, the work of his hands and his substance is increased in the land. But put forth your hand now and touch all that he had. He and he'll curse you to your face. And the Lord said to Satan, behold, all that he has is in your power. Right there, people with the wrong image, you think that God just sick Satan on Job. You know what I mean by that? No, 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 no. God told the truth to Satan. God's not hiding truth. All he has is in your hand. In other words, the wall is down in his life. The shield of faith has dropped. Why? Because his righteousness has dropped. Are you with me? See, if you don't have the right image, you won't interpret right. Next thing you know, you think God wouldn't say no Job or to fix. Listen. Satan is self-employed. God is not employing Satan. God teaches you with his word. Now look what happened. Watch this. And there was a day when the sons and daughters were eating and drinking and so forth. I won't go any, any further with that. Let's go over to chapter two. And that was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord and Satan came among them, so forth and so on. All right. Look what Satan did this time. 
and verse 7. So went Satan forth of the presence of the Lord and smote Job with sore boils from the sole of his foot to his crown. And he took him a potsherd and to scrape himself with all, and he sat down among the ashes. Then said his wife unto him, Dost thou still retain thy integrity? Why don't you curse God and what? Die. Oh, have mercy. Then he said unto her, You speaketh as one of the foolish women speaketh. What? Shall we receive good at the hand of God? And shall we not receive evil? In all this did not Job sin with his, mouth, with his lips. Now, who brought sickness to Job? See, if he brought sickness to Job, is it possible that he can still bring sickness today? Are you with me now? So when things drop, it can open the door to sickness coming. All right, let me just give you another one. Now, it's y'all kind of hard. I can, I can feel it. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get you warmed up here, praise God. How about when they were going to the other side in the ship? Jesus got with him, went to the other side. Jesus fell asleep. What, what came on him? A storm. Am I right about it? What was the storm going to do to him? What was the intent of Satan with the storm to do? He was going to kill them. What did Jesus do to the storm? He rebuked the storm. What did they do to the storm? Nothing. Nothing. They cried out for what? Fear. All right. And Jesus turned to him and said, I, I don't understand. Why is it that you have no faith? You with me? I'm telling you, faith flows with righteousness. It flows like a flood and it'll stop anything from coming into your house. Say amen to this now. Now the problem is that Satan capitalizes on our ignorance. See, and ignorance of who we are, ignorance of the fact that we can develop faith to stop things from coming into our bodies, so forth and so on. And he capitalizes on it. God never intended for Satan sickness to come on you to teach you something. Satan's trying to kill you, <laughs> you know? So when something comes on you, what are you going to do? You got to rebuke it. Say amen to this. He said to you, resist the devil. Didn't he say that? He didn't say he was going to resist it for you. When you jump into faith, then the battle shifts to him and he'll move it out. But you have to resist it in faith. So I saw that the first thing that I got to get straight with God is my own identity. I got to know who I am. So I look in this Bible and I begin to see all the places where I'm in Christ and, and, and as he is, so am I in this world and how he had Peter to get out of the boat and walk on water just like him and so forth. And I didn't take all of that and just pass it up. I began to look at that as me. That's me. Say amen. amen. That, that's me. Folks, you think it's something. <clears throat> You get before a whole lot of people. And if you don't know who you are, that devil will try to shut you down. Yeah, he, he'll try to shut you down. He'll try to make you not be profitable or try to make you so forth. And all the time, God meant for you to be all these things. Say amen to that. Praise God. I trust that you were blessed by that powerful message. Now, here's a point you want to remember. Before God gave man authority and dominion, he gave him his own image. He took, sometimes I say he took a selfie. <laughs> he made us just like him, the exact image of God. Now, this image is so valuable, and that's why Satan tries to come against our image, tries to keep us in low self-esteem, condemnation, and all of that. He knows that having the correct image is key to everything working as it should. 
This is the power that we can get through that correct image. It'll just flow right through us and we can get the things that God has planned for us to do. It is a powerful teaching. You need to get it. Praise God. Well, this is Bill Winston. That's all we have for this time. We'll see you next time. Until then, keep walking by faith. There is a war going on, a spiritual battle where your future and even your destiny is at stake. Your family, your business, your integrity, and even your faith are all targets of a fierce enemy. But as a child of God, you have power, dominion, and authority to resist and defeat the enemy at every turn. It's time for your victory. It's time to see God move in your life like never before. It's time to put on the full armor of God and extinguish every fiery dart that comes your way. Call us now in the U.S. at 1-800-711-9327 or go online to BillWinston.org. Or in Canada, call 1-844-298-2900 or go online to BillWinston.ca and get your copy of Spiritual Warfare, Volume 3. In this revealing four-part series, Series, Dr. Winston will dissect the scriptures to help you unearth the mighty warrior within you. Arise in your God-given image and step into your divine authority and power to win every battle that is waged against you. These teachings will give you confidence like a mighty lion and you will emerge strong in the Lord, ready to tackle every situation that tries to bring you down. And if you desire more understanding of the true power and authority you carry as a child of the King, upgrade to the Believer's Authority Bundle, which includes includes Spiritual Warfare Volume 3 and Dr. Winston's book, The Power of the Tongue. Learn how your power and intentional words can change negatives to positives and establish what you need in your life. Yes, there is a spiritual battle going on, but you have the best weapons at your disposal to win every battle. Your time of dominion, purpose, and destiny is now. Call today to get your DVD or MP4, CD or MP3 copy of this limited time offer. Doctors Bill and Veronica Winston are dedicated to seeing lives changed through the power of prayer. Our loving and highly trained prayer ministers are ready to pray and agree with you. We know that prayer can turn around any situation in your life. Contact us by phone at 1-877-543-9443 or submit your prayer request online at billwinston.org forward slash prayer. Follow us on Periscope and Facebook to join us for our regular live prayer sessions. We want to thank our partners who have made this prayer call center possible. Together, we are transforming lives throughout the world. If you are not a partner, we encourage you to pray about joining us in partnership and be a part of the wonderful work that God is doing through this ministry. We love you and look forward to praying and partnering with you. The mission of Bill Winston Ministries is to preach the gospel of the kingdom throughout the world. This broadcast has been made available to you through the faithful support of Bill Winston Ministry partners and friends. We invite you to become a partner and join Dr. Bill Winston as he trains believers how to live independent of this world system and have dominion over it. Thank you, Bill Winston Ministry partners and viewers for your continuous support of the Believer's Walk of Faith broadcast. The Believer's Walk of Faith is paid for by Bill Winston Ministries partners and viewers.